What's cracking? Big dogs. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to the headquarters. My name is Nicholas, and this is BDGE. Big dogs got eat, and y'all should consider subscribing. I'm going to fucking force you to subscribe by the end of the summer, so you might as well do it now so I stop yelling at you. Okay? Today, I'm talking about three dudes skyrocketing, shooting up my rankings 2021 fantasy football for a number of reasons maybe i just didn't do thorough enough research the first time around okay and now we're digging up the skeletons of the past maybe there's injury news this is the time of the year where training camp reports are coming at us left and right it's like fucking the highway and you're standing in the middle of it and we're just getting slapped in the face left and right with with nonsensical things coming out of beat reporter mouths okay so it's my job to decipher to y'all what's important what's not important we're gonna do that today three guys in which the news or the analysis that I've been doing as of late is moving them rapidly up my rankings, okay? Three dudes, 2021 fantasy football, skyrocket up the... That's how excited I am right now. I sounded like a fucking rocket right there. Before we do so, let's tuck our shirts in. Mine's already tucked. Let's stop yelling. Let's eat. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. Number one on this list, Kyler Murray. You've heard me talk about him a number of times recently in the last video, in the last probably two videos, but I cannot stop drafting. I started, you know, when I start getting really high on certain players, I start doing more underdog drafts, okay? And uh, if you're not already drafting with me on underdog, we will link the app download button, first link in the description, okay? So your iOS, Google Drive, whatever the fuck kind of mobile app you're using, whatever kind of thing you're using, it'll take you straight to the app store and you can draft with me on underdog. But if you're drafting with me on underdog, don't expect to get Kyler Murray because his ass is mine. I don't care what type of league you're in. I don't care if it's one quarterback or if it's super flex because I believe he's got legitimate league winning upside. Last year from weeks one to 16, Kyler Murray was the number one overall player in fantasy football. In week 17, he tried to start. He had a bum ankle. He got hurt. He got rolled up on, missed uh, two and a half more quarter. And regardless, one through 16, number one player in fantasy. Week 17, Josh Allen ended up passing him. So we don't think of Kyler Murray as the top scoring fantasy player in, uh, in 2020, but I'm here to tell you that that's factual. Okay. Now, Kyler Murray's point total from last year, 300, uh, 392.7 or whatever, would have seen him finish as the number one overall fantasy player in five of the previous 10 years. So every other year, that would have been the most points scored in fantasy football. When we are looking at what he did prior to his shoulder injury in week 11, and this is what really excites me, okay? From weeks one to 10, he was going off. He was going nuclear. Week 11, he injured the shoulder and everything flipped. His 16 game pace from weeks one through 10, that's not like a three game sample size or a five game sample size that we're extrapolating to a ridiculous degree. This is 10 games. So that's a big portion of the season. Weeks 1 through 10, if that's a 16-game pace, 485.9 fantasy points. 485.9 fantasy points. And what that means for the simpletons out there is he would have had the single greatest fantasy football season of all time. That's what that number means. And it wasn't close. Prior to this, had he had said it, had he done that 16-game pace, Lamar Jackson held the record. 2019, 415.7 fantasy points. Patrick Mahomes, the year before him, 415.1. Both of them thumping and thrashing to a degree that not even my landlord would be upset about. But Kyler Murray, listen to what I just said. Lamar and Patrick Mahomes both scored 415. Kyler Murray was on pace for 486. That is 4.7 fantasy points per per game more than those two who were the single highest fantasy seasons of all time. Not just 4.7 points overall, 4.7 points per game. That is a massive advantage. And yeah, they're talking about Kyler's going to run less, but listen, elite athletes just run. They just do what they do best. It's it's not a decision to be made. If anything, he's going to be more careful when he's sliding, when he's running. Uh, elite, elite athletes, athlete. That's what they do, and that's what Kyler Murray is. You bring in Rodney Hudson to be a to be a good anchor on the offensive line is one of the better centers that was available in free agency. Uh, you bring in Rondell Moore, an explosive guy who can get him some yak after the catch. I just think there's no way that Kyler Murray does not finish as one of the top two quarterbacks in fantasy this year. And I legitimately think he has league winning upside in one quarterback leagues. I think that he could be Lamar Jackson 2019, Patrick Mahomes 2018. So I'm all in on Kyler Murray. He is shooting up my rankings as I get more and more into my player analysis. Okay, after Kyler, we're going to move over to the wide receiver position. And this Dallas Cowboys wide receiver is skyrocketing up the rankings again. I continue to get more and more shares of him in best ball. It's not Michael Gallup. It's not Amari Cooper. It's not Blake Jarwin. It's not Dalton Schultz. It's not Simi Fahoku, who I do like in Dynasty. Pick him up. Put him on your taxi squad. It's CeeDee Lamb. It is CeeDee 
motherfucking lamb. I'm getting more and more worried about this Amari Cooper foot lower body injury cleanup that he just got, okay? Now, Cooper got put on the pup, and some, I don't know, the, the offseason, the summer pup, it means less than a fucking you up text. Doesn't mean much for right now. But Jerry Jones is coming out and saying that he won't practice until after the first preseason game. That worries me a lot. Whenever we're already projecting a player to be week to week in August, consider me nervous. And I can see I'd be a lot more optimistic about it if he was practicing in limited fashion. And then they're like, we're not going to play him in preseason games just because we're being cautious with it. I don't know, man, but this sounds sounds pretty fucking bad to me. It sounds a little bit fishy to me. And you look back at uh, reports in like early to mid June, Cooper was reportedly two to three weeks away from getting onto the practice field. So that was line number one. We are fully through July. And that was a report from early to mid-June. He was two to three weeks away. Now we're a month and a half later, and he is still two to three to four weeks away from getting onto the practice field. Injury lies tend to lead to more injury lies. It goes from he'll be ready for training camp to he'll be ready for the preseason games to he'll be ready for week one to forcing him onto the field and getting re-injured in week three. Now the next man up on this Dallas offense who's going to explode because of the Amari Cooper, whatever the fuck's going on there, is Mr. C.D. Lamb. C.D. came in as a rookie. He's got the draft capital, obviously. Unbelievable prospect. 111 targets, 74 catches, 935 receiving yards, five touchdowns. You also add in his rushing total. 10 rushes, 82 yards, and a touchdown. So he actually went over 1,000 yards on scrimmage as a rookie. Uh, he's already a very, very good separator as a receiver. He was a dominant prospect. And the thing that I think is most important here, again, is in my video I put out last week, which I will link in the description. You guys should go watch that. We listed uh, we listed fantasy wide receivers this year that have elite ceilings. And I talked about this Dallas offense as a whole for a while. And I talked about what it means to have Kellen Moore as the OC calling the plays. And it means a hell of a lot because we have a two-year sample size now in which they are the fastest pace team in the NFL. And that leads to insane, insane, insane volume. And we looked at a few different charts in that video, which broke it down. Basically, what it did was look at the projected passing volume for this offense, right? We looked at pace. We looked at what we could project in terms of just overall pass attempts from Dak this year, if he's healthy. And depending on the target share of the wide receivers, 15, 17, 18, 22, 25 percent, what that would equate to in terms of targets. OK, now C.D. Lamb needs to see like 18 to 20 percent of the team's target share in order to have crazy target numbers with the way this offense runs under Kellen Moore, the pass, the the volume, the pace, all that kind of shit. If something happens to Amari Cooper's foot, if he re-injures it or he's not ready for the season or if he's out for whatever reason or he's less than 100 percent healthy and C.D. Lamb becomes the alpha because of it, C.D. Lamb is going to be close to that 22 to 24% target share in this offense. And that is a scary, scary number to give a guy like CD Lamb, who's an amazing prospect. That's going to end up being closer to 140, maybe 150 targets this year, okay? That's not impossible on a team that's going to be scoring a lot, that's going to be moving a lot. I think uh, CD Lamb needs to be discussed in the low-end wide receiver one category now, absolutely. And the deeper we get into this summer, Without Amari Cooper gracing us on the practice fields, the more and more C.D. Lamb needs to grace your fantasy teams. So again, draft with me on Underdog. Link will be down below. Get your C.D. Lamb shares. And when you deposit $10 on Underdog, use the promo code BDGE. They're going to throw you $25 on top of it. All right. Last and final player that's moving up the rankings quickly is David Montgomery of the Chicago Bears. We made a, a short video of this last week or two weeks ago. The injury news for Tyree Cohen, man. Same thing with Amari Cooper. It's just it's just bad news. It's just bad news. Anytime you have injury pessimism at this point in the summer, it's a huge red flag because typically it's all rainbows and butterflies for these guys that get hurt. He'll be ready for this. He'll be ready for that. Not what we see here. Cohen's on the pup. Supposedly the knee is is feeling and looking stiff. It's gross. It's it's fucking gross. Yes, Damian Williams and Khalil Herbert got signed to the Bears backfield, but they're breather backs, man. They're not here to replace Terry Cohen. And like, yes, Damian Williams is a great pass catcher, but he's going to be 30. He missed a year from COVID opting out. Like, who knows what he actually is at this point as an NFL running back, okay? And he's not a pass catcher. He is a running back. I mean, Khalil Herbert... Basically, those guys, their talent, their skill set is redundant because David Mon David Montgomery is a younger version of those guys. And Khalil Herbert, yes, is a rookie, but he's old as shit. So I didn't really do the math, but I'm pretty sure David Montgomery might be younger than Khalil Herbert. Regardless, I, I, it's just not brain surgery to tell you that David Montgomery's numbers are really, really good when Tariq Cohen isn't on the field. And we can go back to a two-year sample size. We have 19 games in which the two played together, and David Montgomery is a very nah, RB2. And we have 12 games in which Tariq Cohen is out. 
And what I didn't even realize is Dave Montgomery was averaging nearly 105 yards from scrimmage per game with Tariq Cohen out, okay? 12-game sample size. That's big time. And I'm not sitting here and saying, like, we're projecting Tariq Cohen to miss. It's not like he tore his ACL already again, and we're projecting him to miss the season. But this could very well end up being like a Rashad Penny situation where he misses some games, then when he comes back, he's less than 100%, or he's a decoy, or they don't use him, or he re-injures the knee or whatever. It's just bad everywhere, man. I just feel like David Montgomery is going to work himself into a very, very, very big workload. And you look at what the, the Bears did in their draft picks this year. Their first two picks, Justin Fields, Tevin Jenkins, massive assets to David Montgomery. Should open up holes for him in different ways, in their own ways, but still nonetheless should make him a more efficient runner. I think their run blocking line was a little bit better than expected last year. David Montgomery is obviously a guy that's probably going to need that a little bit. He's not like a, a premier athlete or talent by any means, but you give a guy 20 plus fucking touches and a lot of passing work, he averaged five targets a game, four receptions a game when Tariq Cohen was out. You're going to have big fucking numbers and he's going off the board as like the RB 20 to 22 right now after finishing as the RB four or five last year in fantasy football. So David Montgomery, I, I think as the summer progresses and we stop hearing any news about Tariq Cohen being back on the field and looking spry and looking sharp. Same thing with Amari Cooper. The more they need to be moving up your ranking. So draft Kyler, draft CD, draft David Montgomery, subscribe to my channel, draft my ass, and hit the thumbs up button if you enjoyed the video. That is it for today. I'll see y'all tomorrow. As always, I love you. Goodbye.